again and welcome to Nick's Impromptu Reviews and today we're going to review the ever popular Magic the Gathering and I'm holding right now are the two, two booster packs of the latest two sets Dragon Maze and Core Set 2014 um, now Magic the Gathering to say that it's a global phenomenon is not an understatement it truly is a global phenomenon you have people playing tournaments all around the world for lots of money and there I mean there are some players who live off playing Magic the Gathering and it has made a huge splash ever since it was introduced back in 1993 by mathematician Richard Garfield and ever since then 20 years later it is still going strong and I've never there's probably very few games that made a major impact in the gaming world like Magic the Gathering. It really did make an impact on the gaming world. Um, it's the first CCG, which is the short for collectible card game. There have been a lot of imitators, but none of them, none of them can hold a candle to Magic the Gathering. Uh, Magic the Gathering was the first, and it's still the most popular. And I've got to admit, back when I was playing this, I kind of got addicted to it. It does have that addictive feel. and. That's not necessarily a good thing, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I've been one of those people who fell into the, the magic addiction. Anyways, what's all the hype about? Let's take a look. Okay, so in magic, um, each of you, you and your opponent, will have a deck of a deck of these cards. Now, depending on what kind of format you'll have, you'll either have 40 or 60 cards. And the object of the game is to reduce to eliminate your opponent by reducing him to zero life and you each start with 20 life now these decks they're pretty much you're going to be able to make them unless you're doing a pre-made deck and you'll have your land your spells your creatures your sorceries and they're all represented in your deck and this deck is considered your library like your book Okay. Now let me talk about the first type of cards, and they're called the lands, and you're going to have a lot of these because the lands basically produce mana, and mana is the currency of you, you need to cast certain spells, and each land is represented by a color black, green, red, white, and blue, and those are the colors of magic, and they all have a, a, a different feel to how your deck's going to be played. So let's start with the swamp. The swamp produces black mana, and the black spells are generally hurtful spells um, to do to do cause weakness and just like the dark magic. And the forest, it's about nature and casting creatures and um, just using the earth or the oh yeah, just using the earth for sources. And then you have the mountains, which produce red mana, and the red spells are like very destructive, primarily by fire. Okay, the plains are like the good side of magic, and lots of healing, lots of defense, but deceptively some good offense. By the way, plains, I love white decks. And then you have islands, which produce blue mana. Now, blue mana, it's all about trickery and... Um, Mind, mind control and everything and among all the colors I believe that the blue decks are harder to play because it's very very complex very technical and those are the five colors of magic okay so let's look at the other types of cards you might have in your deck and the first and probably the most common card you'll have are creature cards and for example right here is the spined worm and as you notice it, uh, the creature cards have stats on the lower right hand corner and in this case it's a 5-4. The 5 represents the power or how much damage it could do and the 4 represents the toughness or like the, the hit points as you, as you say. And um, that's how you can tell a creature card. They'll have those stats on it. And these creatures are primarily the way to do damage. Next you'll have sorceries and these are just spells that you can cast on your turn and they'll just do something special. For instance, this is the flame slash and it deals four damage to a target creature. So you can cast it and you can damage your opponent's creatures. Next you have enchantments. Now there are two types of enchantments. Okay, auras, um, what they do, you cast them on a creature and it gives them a buff. 
Okay, in this case, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has reach. And reach is an ability that makes you block flyers. And then you have instants. Now, instants are kind of like sorceries, but <laughs> they're a lot cooler because instants you can cast anytime, even if it's not your turn. And um, hopefully I'll show you a mechanic on how instants work. And that is probably the coolest part of magic are instant spells. And those are like four different types. There are other types, but generally these are the four most important types of magic cards. So let's see how a, how a turn goes in this game. Okay, so let's see how a typical turn goes. And as you can see, we kind of jumped ahead. This is not the first turn, so let's say this is like the third turn. And as you can see, I have two, three lands. I have a mountain, a forest, and a special land that provides either green or red mana. And I have as well a 2-2 creature available. So let's say this is the beginning of my turn. <clears throat> so I look at my hand and on your turn you're allowed to drop to play only one land per turn. So I'll play my forest. So now I have four land available. Okay, so what I'll do, so after you drop a land, and you can drop a land anytime during your your um, turn except during combat. Combat's a special thing, but you can drop a land anytime. You can drop it after combat or before combat. And let's see. All right, and so now I can also cast a spell. And let me look at my hand, and let's say I want to cast this guy right here. This is the Ogre Resistor. And he costs, as up the upper right hand corner, you'll see the cost. And you see two red symbols, so that means you have to pay two red mana. And that two means two more mana of any color. Okay, so do I have it? Well, let's see. Here's one red mana. And tapping, this is one mechanic in this game that's, uh, that you'll have to know. When you tap something, you either used it and you use this ability. Or in this case, when it comes to land, you use it to get your mana. So this is one mana, one red mana, and this one I can tap another red mana from that card, and then, as you say, two more mana of any color, so let's say I tap these two as well. Okay, and that's enough to cast this. So this is a creature, it gets cast, and there you have it. So now I have a 4-3 creature on the board. So now, let's see my next phase. Now, what I can do, and during my turn, I can make one combat, okay? And let's say I want to attack with this guy, okay? And, okay, I know there's a lot of stats, and this is kind of an atypical card, but those are the, let's look at the, the stat right here, two and two, okay? So this is a two, two creature, two power and two toughness. And I'll say I'm going to attack, and I will tap it, showing that I'm attacking. Now, this card I just cast, and it has something called Summoning Sickness. You cannot attack unless it has an ability called Haste. You cannot attack when you on the same turn you cast it, so it'll have to wait till next turn. So I'll, I'll attack with this 2-2 two, two creature. So this 2-2 two, two creature is going to attack my opponent, and the opponent has the opportunity to block. And what he'll do is he'll block with this creature, and I'm sorry, it's upside down. Let me put it right side up. This is the Seagate Oracle, and okay, ignore the ability right now, but um, it's right now it's a 1-3 creature. So, this guy will say, let's block this, block him, okay? So what happens when you have a blocking opponent, you have to resolve it. Let me see which way, okay, let's do it this way. All right, so this, is a, this has two power, that has three power. So, this will do two damage to this creature, and because it has a, this has a power of two and this has a toughness of three, it's not going to kill it. Okay. On the other hand, this one will do one damage to this creature, and this creature's toughness is two, as we said. So it's not going to do any damage either. So um, it's pretty much a standoff. Okay. And at the end of the turn, it, the damage is not cumulative. At the end of the turn, everyone is back to full health. Okay. So that was a stalemate. So, but let's say that. He didn't have any creatures to block. And he gets through. So he'll attack. He has nothing to block. He has no creatures to block. So basically, he goes through and attacks the player. And what happens is that he'll do two damage to the opponent. And the opponent will have to take two damage. 
if it's left on block. Okay, so let's skip ahead again, and let's say that the opponent, my opponent, has cast this creature, and it's a pretty big guy. He's a big 3-3 creature, and it's his combat phase. So he decides to attack me. And the creatures I have are my 4-3 ogre and my 2-2 two -two, um, beast, maker, beast uh, breaker. But the problem is my beast maker is tapped because he attacked last turn. Okay, so he won't be able to block. To order to block, you gotta have an untapped creature. So let's say I have the opportunity to block with this guy. Now I have to make a decision. Okay, he's a 4-3 creature. 4 power, 3 toughness. This is, the one attacking is a 3-3 creature. Okay, so I have to make a decision. If I block, he'll be able to kill me because he does 3 damage to my creature. And my creature only has a toughness of 3. On the other hand, I'll be able to destroy him so if I block both creatures will die so I have to decide if it's worth it or not okay so let me show you how instance works um, let's go back to that scenario that I had before we had my 3-3 uh, three, three creature attacking me and I have a 4-3 creature that has an opportunity to block it well I don't want to lose my creature but then it, uh, so maybe I should take the damage just go ahead and take the damage ah but check this out I have an instant called a lightning bolt. And like I said before, instants cost, I mean, instants can be cast anytime, even during my opponent's turn. And this is probably the coolest part of magic are the instants, because you can play them anytime as an element of surprise. So let's say this creature attacked. It's a 3 3 creature, and then I'll go, okay, I'm gonna cast my lightning spell. It costs one mana, I tap my land, and then boom, I destroy it. Out of nowhere, he did not know where that came from. This does three damage, is a toughness of three, so before it even hits me, I'll be able to eliminate that card. So that is a cool part of magic. <laughs> On the flip side, um, anybody can cast uh, instance, even your opponent, even the offensive opponent. So let me show you how a stack works, okay? So let's go back to the scenario. Okay, I don't block him. But then I'll cast my lightning bolt on him, and it does three damage, which would eliminate him. However, let's say my opponent has an opportunity and has, let's see, ah, this spell. It's another instant. It's called Turn Aside. And what it does, it counters a target spell that targets a permanent in control. A permanent is basically a card that's on the playing field. And yes, that includes the creature. So guess what? In response. He'll cast this on my lightning bolt, countering it. So guess what? My lightning bolt's no good. And now the creature comes over and it hits me for three. And that is probably the coolest part of magic, are the instants. I mean, the element of surprise, the timing, um, and that's how you play the game. You, the timing of your spells, what to do and when to do it, and the back and forth, that is one of the cool parts of this game. Okay, so that was a very brief summary of the game, and um, I apologize, that summary really didn't do this game justice. There's a lot more to it than just um, instances and creatures. I mean, there are just combos, the way you can build your deck combos, and there's so many cards that do so many things, and there's literally an unlimited library of what you want to do. If you can think about if you can think about it, I'm sure there's a if you can think about a mechanic that you want to do, I am sure there is a card or two out there that'll help you do it. So, yeah, this game leaves a lot of room for creativity, um, especially the deck building. And in my opinion, the deck building is the best part of this game. And yeah, you can find websites, you can find forums anywhere, maybe heck, I'm sure there's there are, um, what do you call that? Um, I, uh, what's, on, what's that thing on iTunes? Podcasts. Podcasts on Magic the Gathering. I'm sure there are some of those. But, yeah, um, the creativity is unlimited in this game. And like I said, it's still going strong. There's still a lot of people who play this game. I mean a lot of people who play this game. Um, now, whether you want to be a serious gamer or a casual gamer, I think there's a broad... Uh, it goes across the entire spectrum now. Um, like, and to this day, um, I think it's still very good. And, oh, uh, 
Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to play it, so I think it'll appease the casual gamers, the semi-casual gamers, and that's why I like to call myself a semi-casual gamer. And, uh, yeah, if you want to be the hardcore person, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and spend some money. And I guess that's the drawback, is you still got to spend money on this game. But, all in all, this game has stood the test of time. It's still fun, still popular, and there are still a lot of people who play it. And, yes, it's a very fun, creative game. Very innovative. Okay, um, about 20 years ago, a friend of mine came over and said, okay, there's this new game um, called Magic the Gathering. It's a card game that is very popular and it's hard to find because it's selling out all over the place. Well, um, when I went to my local hobby store after a few weeks after that, they did have it, so I grabbed it. I grabbed one of those um, starter decks, I guess. And uh, yeah, I looked at it, a friend showed me how to play, I read the books, and I got hooked. And when I say I got hooked, I really got hooked. I've been doing tournaments every week. I've been doing drafts. I've been spending a lot of money on cards. And that was back then when I had like a, when well, I was in high school, I, I had like a minimum wage job. So it was, it was, yeah, it, it, took, it took over my life. It was that addicting, but it was a good game. And if you told me to review the game back then, I would give Magic Gathering the 10 because that was basically the only thing I was playing. Okay, um, after a few years, it kind of waned. Their new cards kept coming out. And yeah, it was exciting at first, but then, you know, after a while, you kind of got tired of it. And then you got these hardcore, serious Magic players who just make these killer decks. And, I mean, and then I was just doing dress, but then, you know, I've, I've been just pumping money into it too much. So I kind of quit and moved on. Well, <laughs> a couple of months ago, I, I was at a game convention, and I... For fun, I just played a, a Ravnica block, Ravnica block draft with Dragon Maze, and I did not know any of the cards, and so it took me a while to get used to the cards. But you know, I still knew how, know how to play, and I won the ten man draft. So naturally, I sort of got back into it, sort of. Okay, sort of. Um, but yeah, I, I've been doing a little, you know, a little research, looking up on new cards, trying to catch up. And yeah, I'm, I'm starting to play it a little bit more again. I'm trying to introduce it to my game group, who and some of them never played it before. But anyways, uh, so yeah, um, Magic the Gathering, it's, it's kind of a hard game to review because there's so much, it has evolved so much, and there's so many cards out there. But as I look at the state right now, I think um, Wizards of the Coast is doing a great job at introducing introducing new players and keeping it fresh at the same time and let me go over a few things here um, the one thing that kinda I didn't like about magic like I said you I mean it came to a point where you have these serious gamers that will just create if they have if they have like an unlimited access to every card they can just create these killer decks that'll mess you up in two turns <laughs> and and then laugh about it um, but yeah, and that kind of turned me off. The drafts were okay. Everyone started on playing same playing field, and you draft cards and you create a deck from there. That one's cool too, but then again, it costs money. You got to buy three packs, and a pack is what four dollars now. So three, it costs you twelve bucks every time to play that. So that was kind of a turn off. So now, as I look at the state of Magic today, um, it's not that bad. Or well, let me show you. Um, first of all, okay, this. Is what they introduce intro packs. Now this this is a good um, good good way to get players into it, or at least get familiar with the mechanics of the game. I mean, what these are like when every new set comes out, they come up with these pre-made decks. So right away, you grab a couple of these, and you can play immediately. Just you and a partner can just play. And I think that's a that's a good um, good uh, way to introduce players. But the problem is uh, one of the one of the greatest things about Magic is the deck building, and this kind of lacks in that. So, um, here, what they did make, and this is what I think is really, really cool, they made the Fat Pack and the Deck Builder's Toolkit. 
Now the fat pack, it has nine booster packs and it comes with enough uh, lands for you to make a deck. And this is pretty cool. So basically, just you and a buddy can just grab one of these fat packs, open it up, and you can make a good two or three decks out of this. Yeah, two or three decks, I'd say. Um, so that's pretty good. But what's even better are these deck builder toolkits. I really like the idea of the deck builder toolkits. What it is, it gives you a okay, let's see, 125 semi-random cards like commons and uncommons, and then it gives you four booster packs. Not as much as this, but you get a bunch of the common stuff that you really need and it gives you lands and you can make a nice deck out of this. Now the reason why I recommend, I mean they're both good but I recommend this over the fat pack because the fat pack is like 40 bucks and this is half the price, it's like 20 bucks. So ideally I like these ones. If you and a buddy can just invest like 20 bucks to get uh, each to get a, tech, uh, a deck builder's toolkit, just take these go ahead, build a few decks and play each other. I think that's the perfect format because you get the sense of deck building and it's not too heavy, okay? You don't, you're not gonna, your buddy's not gonna make like a killer deck that'll, <coughs> that'll just annihilate you. I mean, you're, you're sort of on the same field. And um, <coughs> yeah, I think this is a good idea, the deck builder's toolkit. So anyways, that's pretty much it. And so, taking, if you take in all its baggage and all its, uh, you know, all the cards and all its baggage, overall, overall, I will give Magic the Gathering an 8 out of 10. Still the big phenomenon, still addicting, and it's still fun. Assuming you have the money. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so that'll be it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Bye-bye.